Hello everyone, thank you so much for being here and I really appreciate it. I hope it was I hope it was a good journey getting down here and I hope you're all doing well. I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for asking. And I'm going to be presenting majority or some of my work in production design this evening and which is why I've titled it Building Fake Worlds Honestly. And so let's get into it. Again, I'm Dari Ogunaike, and that's me. I currently work as um, an art director and production designer at Bellone Studio, and these are some of the guys I work with. That's the team. It's Solomon and Neka, that's Mayawa, and Joseph, and that's me again. Uh, typically, most of the work I do blend between digital and tangible work. So sometimes I could be doing 3Ds and animation, other times I could be doing packaging design or, or industrial design, and some other times I could be doing set design work and production design work that usually entails me talking with builders and artisans, doing shop drawings like this, or trying to match paint and also setting out props. So. Some background about myself, I really wanted to study production design or industrial design, but at the time I was applying to get into university, I don't think there was anything as such. So I applied to study architecture, and this is, these are some of my favorite work from architecture school. The image at the top right is just an info paper will be given to you and you'll be asked to fold it into something that is self-sustaining and that's very structural. And your submission would usually be very nerve-wracking, so you'd drop your submission and the lecturer would just take probably his phone or a textbook and drop it on whatever you have folded with the paper and see how long or what, how much it can carry. And I don't remember what this was, but this is also something from <laughs> architecture school and this as well. This is. If I remember correctly, it's um, UN, UN Habitat project with Kogi State Government, and this, this was just a scale model for that. Fast forward into like second year in architecture school, I picked up graphic design, and most of what I would do as renders would be clay models, clay renders, then I would take them into Illustrator or Photoshop and like painstakingly colorize and add like environment to it. And I got a job at AWCA, which is like an idea consultancy and um, artist represent, representation agency. And most of the work I did there was centered around creating posters for like event, movie screening, and big system and block party were in-house events. They were they were like pop-ups and cultural festivals. Block party was a street party. And also did very arts-inclined things like this project with Poly Alakija and Lagos State Government. This is on the Falomo Bridge. And this was with Caro Aquarari and it was called Your Had Your Had Your Had Year or Had Year. It was Typically, artwork that could be put on billboard and exhibited. Then I started working at Afro Minima, where I was doing physical product design, and I was making tangible stuff. And I would describe the ethos of Afro Minima as very simplistic, inspired by Yoruba culture, and influenced by urban lifestyle. And we created a few platters for some restaurants in Lagos, created this stool, this shelf, and a few other things. And some of the work we created had been exhibited at 100% Design Fair in the UK, and recently concreted um, Charger Triennial in Dubai, and there's currently a pop-up at Echo Hotel, where you can still see this here. Um, then I joined Rise as a brand designer, I'm not talking to you about my brand design work at Rise. I'm talking, I'm going to be talking as an architect that worked at Rise. And 
So at the period where that design studio was doing this rebound and created this, AK, had, AK is the CEO of Rice. AK had mentioned that the company was getting a building on about Macaulay Way and we're going to be working out of there. And I think I had mentally said, oh, I want to design this. And it was like, oh, okay, let's go. Then it took, it took me here and I was like, very interesting. I think the building was previously owned by Cardinal Stone and with the typical office, they had, so these pictures are after we had cleaned out the space, they had a bunch of um, exterior trunkings and um, what do you call these things again? Partitions to divide the space. Uh, so after multiple conversations with the leadership at Rise and AK, I understood what they could do with the structure and the building and I called in some of my friends from from DHK and we started to work on the building. So we had created, we had drawn up the layout, existing layout, and also created demolition plans. Red lines are demolition drawings on walls to be taken down. And we proceeded to doing the proposed layout. Left is ground floor, right is um, the top floor. So we had sort of opened up the space and taken out like most of the internal walls. And we started work. This was when the structural work began. We also did a lot of building services, that is electrical, plumbing, and mechanical, um, also things like internet wiring, alternative power source, like inverters and solar installations. So we took out the guts of the building and put on that one there. Uh, we also introduced some eye section beams somewhere that was concealed just to give more support and structure. So this period, their design had already shared um, some elements from the rebrand they were working on. These colors and these patterns were like the first set of elements that were shared. And we already started to think about the materiality of the work we're doing on site and this element. So we saw some fabric to create like accent, we call it accent furniture and the dots we did test perforation on the cladding that we planned to use on the exterior of the building. And this was what it looked like on the inside. So the colors there and somewhere there and also on the wall. And on the exterior, this was what it looked like. So this perforation actually gave us a lot of opportunities. He helped us conceal a lot of the exterior units of ACs, and because we had made them modular, we could take them out and do maintenance work and put them back very easily. Also at night, it also helped us to illuminate the building. So what would, what would typically be perimeter light shining on the building at night, we were able to put the light inside of the building. So the light just, the building lights itself typically, or essentially, and that's the, then I discovered production design. So in the process of finishing the building at Rise, myself and Jordan, Jordan I, and Jordan worked together at the studio and we've been obsessing and talking about a lot of design in movies. So um, some Wes Anderson movies, and I think the Grand Budapest Hotel was the one that did it for us and we were like, designing movies is actually something people don't talk about a lot. Then we had also seen a talk by Annie Atskin, she's a graphic designer, but graphic designer for film. So we're like, oh, this is something very interesting. Then we started to explore that with brand ads. And because brand ads just have this very fine, cool thing that we used to make it very strongly. Um, what's production design? I would, I would describe it as all the process involved in creating the visual narrative or the visual consideration for a movie. So if you take a frame of a film right now and take out the actor or whatever you see in the background, be it colors, frame on the walls, and lights, that's what production design is. And it just helps push the story better. So imagine you are listening to a story and you're also painting a picture in your head. That's what production design is. And these, 
these are the processes involved. So the set construction, which involves either building a scene or building an installation that's going to be used on film, prop selection, set styling, furnishing, artworks that could be on the wall or framed pictures or some, and practical light, uh, light sources that you can see within a frame. Then scenic painting is like a recreation of a scene uh, where either you're trying to age something or you're trying to make it look pristine or create something that you can't have originally. And graphic design is if you have like posters on the wall, calendars, or even a map, or even a signage that says, go this way. So all these things, even in newspaper, you can't just have a random newspaper or a live newspaper on film. You have to like design it. Then objects, the actors will interact with. It could be a phone, it could be even a drink. So imagine you are filming and someone's supposed to drink any wine. You can't essentially give them a wine so they don't get drunk. So you have to replace whatever they are holding with something that looks like a wine. And it could be a knife as well. Then screens, so consideration for screens would, could be phone screens, um, computer screens, TV screens, or even a billboard and costume. So there's always this back and forth for costume. Either it's the stylist's responsibility or the production designer's responsibility. And that's because some costume needs to be designed. So if, take for instance, you're filming in a cafe like this and it's branded cilantro the waiter or bartenders will have something branded cilantro. That's production designer's responsibility, not the stylist's responsibility. So that's why costume is here. So I'll show some case study just to explain this process. Yeah, typically start with highlighter and a script. So it could be 100 page script, you just need to sit down with highlighter and mark out things that give context. So bedroom, a, um, a bungalow, opens the door, the actors walk in, pick up a key, so you just highlight everything. So while I'm doing that, I also simultaneously make a, like an inventory directory. I use Notion a lot, so I'll do that in Notion, create a list of things, then create scenes that they'll be used in, create the quantity needed, and how they're going to be sourced, rather printed, produced, rented, bought, or fabricated. So do that, and the first case study is Maggie. So I had worked on this with the best as director, fed as DOP, and the brief was essentially to create a kitchen for a cook show. And the cook show was going to last about 20 days, I think. And um, Typically, you expect a kitchen to be within a building or within a facility that, need, that has need for a kitchen, but we we're doing this in an empty studio, and this is what the design looked like based off the script. They needed a door on the left there so the host could walk into the kitchen and have the cook and basin so in the center. And after we had presented this, sorry, I say we a lot, it's not French. I mean we as the collective of people I work with because I can't single handedly do all this work alone or all, all by myself. And we presented this and the feedback was make it yellow. Then redesigned to this and figured out we used about five different shades of yellow, five to six different shades of yellow on different textures and different surfaces. After this was done, we needed to figure out how this kitchen would work. So plumbing for water, because there are two basins here and the cooker, also electricity for the fridge and all that because it needed to function for the cook show. While the construction was happening, we also needed to source for fittings, and faucet, surface finishes, the floor, and cookers. So I really wanted to use induction cooker for this, but clients wanted, or director wanted, <laughs> wanted a cooker that has flames because it look cool on camera. And yeah, this is what it looks like while we were building. So while that was happening, we had to also go back and read the script and read the um, recipe list and yeah, recipe list to figure out what was going to be cooked. So all this is production designer's responsibility. They're going to make fufu, they're going to pound yam, so you need to bring all the elements required. And 
also in the right brown colors and in the right in the right appearance. They can't look like they had been used or they can't look like you just brought them from your mom's kitchen or something. So we had started to style after building, then also included practical lighting. So this light source you see here is what's called practical lighting. It's almost not very functional, but it needs to be there just to make everything look all together. And I'm not sure this image is showing like this. Well, this is what it's a new season of Ramadan, a season of kindness, sharing, and lots and lots of cooking. It's also a new season of Maggie Diaries that will keep you inspired with amazing recipes for every taste and budget, where we bring out the amazing flavors in every dish in a way that only Maggie can to make every iftar more enjoyable for all 30 days of Ramadan. Maggie Diaries' new season is showing every day and everyone is welcome. Yeah, that's what the finished kitchen looks like. Thank you. Next case study is Nine Mobile. So this also worked with Dabest as director, um, Fed as DOP, Ibuka as producer, and we're essentially supposed to create two ads that introduces the new brand influencers for Nine Mobile and also their new product offerings. The first one was with Benson, formerly known as Bujo, and the script was to create a studio where he's trying to record something and publish online, then somehow, some way, Nine Mobile facilitates that and he publishes it and it goes viral. The second one is was set in a TV show set, a TV show set where the brand influencer who is beauty was asked a question and she's at the process of her answering. Some guys backstage, I think the janitor and um, stylist overhead, and they felt inspired and motivated and changed and happily ever after. Uh, for the first one, we had done a recce. We had gone for a recce to inspect the location where we're going to build, and that's what we're doing. I just you my henny, no get time for no henny, Kenny. Music, it don't fool my belly. Oh, yo, me, oh. Oh, you me, I'm ever ready. Machiavelli don't double demi. Make a girl toes crawl like Jerry. But I can't say that I'm a romantic guy. I don't care about rumors. Oh, she let me rumor. Sipping them on Okura. Oku, be my boo. Yeah, so all those gesticulation you are seeing is we're just trying to decide what we're going to do with this space. I think. It was an abandoned building and wanted to convert it into a recording studio. So I designed the booth, the recording booth and the sound engineers like console. That's what's happening here. So here is what you see when I take consideration for screen in production design. You usually have like green screen over any screen. So VFX can either superimpose something or they can replace whatever is supposed to be there. Um, then to prop sourcing for the set, we are decided on these, and that's Josh's IO bench. So we also try to infuse artist work in the work we do, and also practical lamps again and plant. This is what. So in looks order like. to push out the best content for our subscribers, we need to determine his outfit for the album cover. Like many things in life, this? making great music is a process. And a key part of that is the right data and the data that helps you understand what needs to be done and how to do it and what sound will connect with listeners. Yeah, bring it up, bring it up. Let's go where everybody see. So, whatever aspect of life you're into, enjoy the journey. Nine Mobile's got you covered. Dial star 301 hash now. Nine Mobile. Yeah, that was the first one. So the second one, I'm just going to play the ad right up, then we'll talk about what we did. So here's the thing. Why do you do what you do? Is it because it's what you want to do? Or it's what other people expect you to do? 
The most important thing is to take a step every day in the direction of where you want to be. It means you're not where you want to be, but you're on the way there. That's what being bold means to me. Take your own bold steps with Nine Mobile. Dial star 301 hash to choose a data plan that works for you. Nine Mobile. Yeah. So the requirements for this was a lot more. There was a lot of graphic design to do for this. So we had come up with nighttime chart, choosing them for the show, and they had to design what the agency would look like. And also we created some icons for other scenes I would show you. So that's the logo there that you see in the center of the screen. And we had also built this platform that was supposed to be the stage, created this furniture that they're sitting on, and also we sourced about 200 plants just to create this that barely should. <laughs> then iconography and wayfinding for this scene. And also when doing graphic design for film, we need to do like multiple versions. So almost like you're doing active and inactive icons. And here we had to recreate flood tiles because the green. And this next project is actually a music video. And what we mostly did was scenic painting and a recreation of what we typically look like a buka and a street, street side barber scene. Also a music video, it's fond. Artist is Kelo, Ebuka was producer, and um, all we did was mostly graphic design on a lot of it because we needed to create font, a lot of cash, and we didn't want to, what's it called? We didn't want to reuse anyone that was rumpled, folded, or badly, what's the word? That was one key, just because some of them were going to go into a counting machine, and that's just a trailer. I would. That's just a trailer. I would pl play the video afterwards. So what we did, aside sourcing for all the um, elements to style this scene, was design notes that were going to be used and also produce them in the right way. But because we are not central bank or we're not minting press, we just need to find a way around it and. This is what it looks like when designed, and you also need to take into consideration things like this, so people don't take your money and go and spend it and say you give them fake money or something. Uh, so I'll play the full video so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, that's what. Thank you, thank you, and um, thanks for listening. Um, <laughs>